Welcome everyone, this is Coaching in Session. My name is Michael Reardon and I will be your mindset coach today. And today we're going to be talking about the mindset for healing. Now recently, well not recently, probably a couple months ago now, I had to go to the dentist. And the dentist, you know, my least favorite doctor, but you have to go, you have to go. I don't mind going for cleanings, you know, routine checkups, things along those lines. Things are typically good. Well, I guess things weren't good this time. And I had to go for a whole procedure. And it's so funny because like my whole face was like all blown up. It was all swollen. I had to put ice on it. I had to take like ibuprofen. And it was ridiculous. But it was interesting because one week post-surgery, I went back and the doctor was like, what are you, Wolverine or something? You're healing so quick. Like typically it takes people a lot longer to heal. And I said to myself, well, one of the reasons I'm probably healing so quickly is because I gave my mindset a mindset for healing. And it sounds crazy, right? How can you give yourself a mindset for healing? Well, today we're going to be talking about it. But before we do that, let's take a look at my most recent blog so we can get some information before we begin. All right, everyone, if you're new to the channel, new to the podcast, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and to share the video and our audio to help build a community of individuals who are looking to elevate their mindset. And today we're going to be talking about the mindset for healing. As I just gave that introduction, there is an unwritten rule in the world, and is that if your mindset can lead toward healing, positivity, the good stuff, right? The optimism, that is going to lead to a life that is going to be more abundant. Now, this is not to say that if you just live life and everything is good and you're like, oh, I'm happy and things are going good, it doesn't mean your life is going to be magically better. You have to do something in order for this to happen. You have to have action. But then the mindset that you give yourself, I guess you can call it the fuel for the vehicle. Because when we look at a trauma that happens in our life, a bad moment, we get to choose what we do with it. Sometimes people stay stuck, they stay still, they stay exactly where they are. And then sometimes people say, no, 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 I'm not staying here. I don't care what it is. But even if that, we can give ourselves hope. Now, hope is going to be a great thing to have, but it's actually something that has no power. There is power in hope, but when it comes to mindset and actionable steps, Reality is reality. And I want hope to have power and I want you know people to be hopeful for a better tomorrow. But if I could be realistic with you for a minute, if you wanted to give yourself a mindset for healing, a mindset for growth, a mindset for better, there's always the chance that it's not going to happen. Think of it as if you play a sports game, you have the opportunity to win you can be the number one seed in your division and you can still lose. It does not matter about your placement. Sometimes, even if things are lined up perfectly, things do not work out. Now that's going to be, you know, a minority of situations, but we have to look at that as a reality because I don't want you to say, oh, well, you know, I got sick and then I gave myself this good, strong mindset that you're talking about, Michael, and I'm still sick. Well, are you still doing the things that made you sick? Are you making any adjustments in your life? A mindset for healing is not only about being stubborn and sticking to the positive side. It's more so about what is the aspect of what you need to do to make sure that the healing process is going to be a rapid rate rather than a stagnant rate. And in this article, I wrote all about the aspects of the healing mindset. I talk about the aspect of my dental surgery a little bit. And I talk about other people who have gone through it. We have breast cancer survivors, people who have lost their limbs or they have become paralyzed from the waist down and they're able to walk again. What is this, right? Things that doctors would call impossible are becoming a reality. So in this article, we talk about the healing mindset, but in the podcast today, and I hope you stay tuned for it, 
is we're going to be talking about how the healing mindset is formulated and what you need to do in order to not only attain it, but maintain it. It's very similar to how if you can have a brand new car, eventually the shine wears off. But there are going to be ways that you can keep that shine and that luster going on for a lifetime. The same thing is true in your mindset. And as I said, the same thing is true in your mindset. Because when it comes to you trying to make some changes in your life, you have to understand what is for you and what is not for you. Sometimes you might say, complacency is for me. I'm going to take it easy. I work so hard. And that could be a reality for you. But for the individuals that do that, it's almost like a sugar. You crave it. Eventually, you need some more of it. And you go back to it typically. You have these withdrawals and you start to get the shakes and you're like, oh, I got to make some changes. And typically the change is falling right back to where you were. You're not changing for the better. You're changing to be exactly who you were. If we try to make a change, our mindset typically, to focus on the positive, the healing, the better things in life, it could be one of the surface level things that people do. It is easy to pray for somebody or give them good wishes, but then at the same time, the reality is the reality. Either you're going to make it or you're not going to make it. This is the harsh truth of life. Because I hope everyone in life does good, but the reality is not everyone's going to do good or be good. There's going to be situations that people shouldn't be in. There's going to be moments when people want to, you know, just shudder from and run away from. Everything is not going to be rainbow and gumdrops. I wish it was that easy that I can just snap my fingers and everyone has a good mindset, that everyone's happy. Everyone's fulfilled. People are living the life of their dreams. But that's not true. It's not true for many people. There are many good people who lose their life every single day. Loved ones, friends. It happens so suddenly sometimes. Sometimes they have been fighting for so long. They lose. What separates those people from the people who don't try or the people who try really hard? Because it's almost like a gambit, a crapshoot. Like you don't know what you're going to get. It's like a dice toss. I'm tossing the dice and I hope it lands on whatever number I need because Papa needs a new pair of shoes. And in life, we're always looking for that next opportunity, but we're not doing everything in order to live in that opportunity fully. So going to the story of me at the dentist, and I know it's not a fun story. When I was young, I mean, I didn't take care of my teeth because it was just like, I just like candy, I'll brush my teeth every so often, I'll floss my teeth every so often, and guess what? I got cavities all the time, I was always in pain, I just hated the dentist. No wonder why I hated the dentist, I didn't take care of myself. And then I remember, I was watching a commentary of Chris Rock, and he was talking about getting a root canal, and how like pregnant women are complaining how, how you know, the pain of a of a, you know, pregnancy is more like it's the worst thing in a life of labor. And Chris Rock is saying, well, I had a root canal. That crap hurts. Well, guess what? I remember when I was, I guess I was like maybe 16, 17 when I got the root canal. I was young. The doctor did a great job. The issue was not the doctor. I mean, it was a long procedure that put like a block in your mouth and then you're there for a long time while they do it. And it was pretty chill. I think my brother took me, I can't recall, I think my brother took me to the dentist. My dad was at work at the time, so my, and my mom was at work too. So my brother had taken me, and then after, they were like, oh, you know, just take some Tylenol or something, it's going to hurt or something like that. And I remember going home, and then all my friends were like, hey, you coming out? And like, there's like a party or something. And I was like, no, I can't go. I just had a root canal. And they were like, oh, okay. And then basically, I was like, you know, telling everyone, I just had open mouth surgery. And and they were like, oh, okay. And I'm thinking in in my head that I'm going to be in a world of her. I'm going to be in so much pain. But yet the pain never really came. I was still able to work out at my house. I was still able to do everything that I used to do. The issue was not so much of, you know, the root canals were, you know, supposed to be painful. And it wasn't. 
It was more so of, you know, that was just my situation. Maybe I have a high tolerance for pain. And I would say I do. And then we fast forward now. The root canal finally failed. And, you know, I'm 36. Finally failed. And all of a sudden, I'm thinking in my head, you know, like something that was so good, you know, before and everything was good. Now it's a problem. It happens in life. Things can be just good in life and everything is working out in your favor. And then all of a sudden, things are not good anymore. You have to handle business. So he gave me some options. He said, you can do this, that, or whatever. And I basically chose the thing that was the most invasive and then also had the shortest healing time because the other one was like four months healing. And this was like a two or three month healing. It might sound like not a big deal one month, but heck, one month of, you know, healing and being good, a world of difference because you have to understand, I need to speak. I need to talk, not saying that I need to, you know, tell people like, I, I got to talk to you. It just, you know, we have a podcast, we have clients that I have to speak with, things along those lines. I can't be out of commission too long. I'm a busy man. I'm going to stay a busy man. So after the surgery, and I typically don't listen to doctors when they have to do a surgery. So for example, if I'm getting wisdom teeth taken out, I don't need to know everything you're going to do. Just do the job. All right. Just do your job. Get it done with. It doesn't matter. I know it needs to be done. Get it done. I take my car to the mechanic and the mechanic says, hey, you need new axles. I'm not going to say, why do I need new axles and blah, blah, blah. And I start yelling at the mechanic. If I know I need new axles and I'm hearing the car turn and the car can't really turn well. And I mean, there's problems with the car. I know there's something wrong with it. So if the car needs new axles, okay, get it done. I don't want this problem. Let's fix it. But some people, they want to know every little nitty gritty detail. And I said, no, no, I don't need to know. Only thing I need to know is that the surgery was done. It was done to your best of your capabilities. And now is my job in order to get better and to heal. So after the surgery, you know, the doctor was like, oh, you have to take these meds. And he gave me a couple. He gave me the antibiotic. He gave me the ibuprofen. And then he also gave me like a heavy opiate. I do not take opiates. Even when I got my wisdom teeth taken out, which I think was worse than this one because you have like your whole mouth was kind of, you know, hurting or whatever. That situation was worse than, you know, this, you know, this apiotomy or whatever surgery. I don't even know how to say it properly, but it is a surgery where they have to do like the roots of the root canal or something. So they can either do a root canal again or they can do the surgery to, you know, go fix the roots or whatever from the root canal. Well, either way, I decided to do the surgery after the surgery, everything went good. And then he goes, take the meds, take the meds because you're going to be in a lot of pain. And I was thinking in my head, okay, sure. You know, I know to take some Tylenol or whatever. And so, uh, you know, I go to the HEB, which is the best store, the best grocery store in the world. If you live in Texas, you go to HEB. Okay. I know they have Randall's and all these. You go to HEB when you're in Texas. It's just a different experience, all right? This, and you know, we're not sponsored by HEB, but I am going to send this to them. I'm going to send this clip right here to HEB, and if they want to sponsor the podcast, hey, we'll make sure that happens, and we'll have a little HEB billboard in the back, and we'll make sure it lights up neon style, and people will know. HEB is like Bucky's. You want to go to it. Well, either way, we're trying to figure out if we... Are going to be in a lot of pain now, right? All right, I, you know, I'm supposed to take Tylenol, I'm supposed to take antibiotics, all right? Those are, you know, common things, right? You don't want to get an infection and you don't want to feel like crazy pain. And for me, pain is more annoying than things that hurt, all right? The only time I think I was in the most pain is when I got eye surgery. And the only reason it was because like the bandage got like, it's like a contact bandage, it was over the eye and basically. Like it got stuck in the eye, like it healed over the eye as the eye was healing. And it basically, when you pull it off, it like pulled off some of the skin. Oh my God, so much pain. But it was uh, definitely an interesting experience. I, I, I mean, I haven't been shot yet or anything. I'm not saying I'm going to get shot or anything, but I haven't been. But I, I, I think it will be the same pain of getting shot. All right. It was that painful. But either way, 
I was like, this is a more of an annoying pain. So the doctor said, don't eat on your left side. I'm like, okay, fine. I won't eat on my left side. He's like, eat soft foods. Don't eat these type of foods. I'm like, okay, you know, I'm going to do that. And you know what I did? As soon as I got home, I'm like eating chicken and I'm like, it's chicken breast. I'm eating, you know, I think I had some eggs and mashed potatoes the first day. Um, I think I had some salads and things along those lines, rice and all this bread and stuff. But guess what? I'm not supposed to be eating it, supposedly and apparently. Guess what? I was like, I'm still going to live my life. I don't have time to be waiting for, you know, me to feel better in three months. I got to live life now. Three months in the scheme of things? Look back at the pandemic when people willingly gave three to six months of their life to stay inside. Oh, yeah, I'm not going to take action. Oh, yeah, you know, people tell me to sit and be patient. Okay, I understand that. I understand flying the curve, doing your part. Okay, cool. But those three months, those six months, you're not getting them back. And imagine you doing that habitually in your life. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. It's not the right time yet. I'm going to wait. You'll be waiting for the rest of your life. So then we go into the aspect of, I'm not a good patient. My wife even said it. She goes, you know what? You're not a good patient. And I go, good. I don't want to be a good patient. I don't want to listen to the doctor's orders. I want to go against their orders because doctors, for some reason, they have limits. They say, oh, this is the typical. Okay, well, I don't want to be average. Tell me what is above that. You don't have pain. You heal quickly. Good. Let me do that. Because the brain does something amazing, people. If you give it the focus to do what you want it to do, for some reason, it just does it. Life gets out of the way, everything gets out of the way, and it's like, boom, it has to get done. Think of it in line to procrastination. Procrastination is the fear of putting off something until the fear of not doing it becomes greater than the fear of doing it. It's the same concept, not the same idea. The concept is you do something when you have no choice. If a car is on top of you, or if uh, like a car is on top of one of your family members, a car that you probably could never move in your life, for some reason you're able to flip this car. And if you don't believe me, there are stories of a mom who went to save her baby from a car that was flipped over. This woman flipped over her car by herself. How in the heck does that happen? Because I'm sure she's not flipping over cars every single day. All right. And if she is, make sure you don't bother her and make sure you get out of her way. But she's probably not that type of person. What gave her that adrenaline, that momentum, the mindset? Sometimes it's do or die in life. If you know that you have no other alternative, you're going to push through. You're going to fight. You're going to yell. Think of it as if you are uh, drowning, for example. And I hope you haven't been in that situation. If you are underwater, at some point, you're going to start to fight, fight for air. Your brain is going to kick in saying, hey, I want to breathe. I want some air. Give it to me. And it's going to fight for it. That's why you start flailing. You start doing everything. Your brain is starting to think like, "Uh oh, like I need to get air. Even if you say you don't want it, the mind is powerful and you can give that power in the form of healing. So I said, you know, I'm not going to be like this. I'm, you know, I'm going to make sure I can heal quickly. I'm going to make sure I don't, you know, just simply follow the doctor's orders and whatever happens in a couple of weeks happens in a couple of weeks. I was like, I don't have time. So a week later when I did the post checkup, because you have to go a week later after the surgery, the dental assistant saw me first and then the doctor saw me. The dental assistant was like, whoa, you're healing quick. And then the dentist said the same thing. He goes, whoa, what's happening here? It's like, are you Wolverine? And I was like, eh, you know, whatever. I'm just thinking in my head, you know, this is whatever to me. Like, it's just a process. Like, I have to go through it. Like, I, I understand there were things that I did when I was younger. I wasn't taking care of my teeth. And now I have to deal with the consequences to anything that doesn't happen. Now, today, I take really good care of my teeth. It took all of this pain and all of this hardship and all of this money to like realize like, hey, your teeth matter, your health matters. The doctor even went on to say, it's like this surgery is supposed to hurt a lot. Like you didn't even take like the Tylenol codeine stuff, like the opiates and stuff. I'm like, no, I'm not, like, I'm not taking that. I told him 
He goes, that's interesting. He's, he, he's like, you must have a high tolerance for pain. And I'm just thinking in my head, like, you know, it was more annoying than anything. And on a scale of one to 10, he asked me, he was like, how painful was it? I was like, maybe a four or five. And then he's like, yeah, you just have a high tolerance for pain. Most people are saying 10 and they're calling the office asking them, when is this pain going to go away? And for me, it's kind of like, I'm just going through the moments, going through the movements. I'm like, okay, this is reality right now. But it wasn't going to be my continual future. I knew that. I gave myself this mindset for healing and I healed. And my story is not the only story, people. I want you to do some investigation of people who were able to heal, who were able to overcome odds. When doctors say you have only three to six months to live and people live for five to 10 years after that, what is going on? Were the doctors wrong or were the people just so stubborn that they did not accept death? They chose to get better. They chose to sustain themselves. And that is where we are. We can choose to fall into whatever someone tells us, or we can choose to step into our own reality. And sometimes when we are faced with a reality that is not so pleasant and not so great and abundant, we start to feel bad about what's going on in our life. So we have a pity party. We become more pessimistic. And that right there slows down our healing process and the brain begins to die. So in closing, this article, this blog right here, Mindset for Healing, is going to be a great read for anyone who's looking to understand how powerful the mind can be. Because at the end of the day, we get to choose what is going to be our reality. We can live in abundance or we can live in mediocrity. All right. And I want people to choose the abundance one because it's going to bring more fulfillment in their life. But it doesn't come easily. There is a cost to it. And the cost is going to be investing in yourself and making sure you have the mindset that can facilitate everything that's going to come your way. Because not everything that comes your way is going to be great. Some things are going to be good. Some things are going to be terrible. And the things that are terrible, we need to learn how to have that mindset to overcome them, to heal from them, recover from them, and then to propel from them. We can look at all of the stories of people who have been in car accidents and have lost their ability to walk and they're able to walk again. People who shouldn't be alive after an accident, whether it be with fire or water or whatever, it's almost like a miracle happened. But that miracle could be you too. Maybe it was the aspect of hope that I was saying, the hope that we give every ounce of ourselves, Because Even when you have a choice to fight for your life, to yell, to scream, to shout, and to claw at life, you don't have to. You can sit there quietly and do nothing. Some people, they just sit there and get beat up every single day. Some people just get kicked and spit on and food thrown at them. They live this life and they don't understand that they can make some changes. You don't have to do this, people. You can start to live in more abundance. If you are in a bad, dark place right now, you can grow and you can heal from it. No one says that you have to suffer for your whole entire life. There's going to be moments, yes, when you will suffer. It's inevitable. Whether it be grief or just personal suffering, growth hurts. Growth can hurt. Think of growing pains when you're like younger, okay? When you're a baby and you're teething, it hurts, okay? But guess what? You overcome it. And now we're afraid to get stung by a bee or we're afraid to scratch our knee. So we play it safe. But safe is not going to get you anywhere. Tiptoeing in life is not going to get you anywhere. Waiting is not going to get you anywhere. So why not live life on your terms? Why not give yourself a mindset that's going to give you a superpower? Whether it be healing, taking action, whatever it be, you get to choose. But you have to have several proponents in place for it to be effective. Because anyone can give themselves a happy moment, a happy day, a positive thought and say, well, my mindset is powerful. My mindset is good. My, my mindset is strong. But the reality is your mindset is still weak and fragile. Because the moment something bad happens in your life, what do you do? Do you run away? Do you cower? Do you not take action? Do you base your life again on hope and luck? 
instead of yourself, your body knows what it's capable of doing. The mind can get in the way. The body is an amazing thing. We cut our arm or our finger or something. We don't have to think about it. All right, I'm going to think about my finger healing. I'm going to think about, I'm going to give my, you know, my, my healing power to my finger and, I, and my finger is going to heal. It doesn't do that. The body heals automatically. The body knows how to heal. The mind just gets in the way. The same thing is true with challenging yourself, your limits. If you're on the treadmill, if you're just, you know, walking and doing things, your brain is telling you to stop, 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 stop. The brain gets in the way. The mindset gets in the way. And the secret is if you can learn how to not allow your mindset to get in the way every single moment and for everything in your life, things are going to start to move more quicker. You start to heal better. You start to take more action. You start to, you know, live like no one else is living because most people only know how to react. They react to something bad happening into their life. But yet everyone knows that reacting is slower than taking action. Because I can take action to, you know, try to hurt somebody and try to punch them in the face. My action is quicker to their response of reacting because that's what it is. So I want you to give yourself the rapid response. All right. Think of it as a quick clot, you know, those things where you can put it over a cut or a wound or whatever, and it stops the bleeding. It's a quick clot. Quickly happens quickly. Our mindset can get into that same thing. Something bad happens in your life? Okay, good. All right, let's figure out what we do next. Not something bad happened in my life? Oh, man. I'm going to go home and I'm going to go drink. And I'm going to go sit on the sofa and I'm going to eat some ice cream. And I'm going to watch some Netflix and some movies and some friends. Because, you know, it's always nice to have some friends. But guess what? When you do that, You're not giving yourself the aspect of taking action and your mind is also learning. I don't have to take action when things go wrong. So it's not going to give you the fuel. It's not going to give you the momentum. It's not going to give you what it needs. I'm here to give you exactly what you need, that if you are healing, that if you're living, that if you're trying to get to a different place or a different situation, your mindset is going to be a key player in how it is done, how quick it is done. I'm not saying things happen overnight. Things take time. Empires take time to build and even sometimes take time to fall apart. They say, you know, I'm just going to use this uh, quote really quick because I I think it's relevant, is that people don't fall out of love. They stop investing in it. An empire is not destroyed. It's just not being built up. We can look at what's happening here in America. The decline, it's not so much of America and the world and everything is going in, it's that we are not investing in ourselves anymore. We will easily outsource things to you know a different country because it's easier, it's cheaper. And I'm not saying if you're a business person, you should you know find a top dollar secretary or VA or um, editor and say, well, I'm going to pay top dollar because you're in this country. I mean, I understand people are going to outsource things to save money and make a profit. We are businessmen and women, but we have to understand that one of the reasons that people are falling out of this mindset is because everything has become outsourced, but yet we cannot outsource ourselves. We have to take responsibility for ourselves, and that means we have to take action. So I encourage everyone to check the links in the description box below. Check out this blog, Mindset for Healing. And if you are in the market for a mindset coach, learn more about what we do at reverendconcepts.com and inquire about a free consultation. And we'll be more than happy to help you on that way to a better, stronger mindset, whether it be healing or anything else we have you covered. My name is Michael Reardon. I'm a mindset coach. If you have any questions, email me coachinginsession at gmail.com. And I'll see everyone on the next episode of Coaching In Session. Until then, everyone take care.